they should not be here. This, um, uh, this is a uh, uh, sort of a neutral place. It's certainly not the place in, a, in, a, in an oil and gas city uh, for us to be promoting uh, the Northern Gateway pipeline not proceeding. Certainly there's some tough questions that need to be asked as far as how this was allowed to ever be permitted in the first place and, uh, and, uh, and that it abs absolutely shouldn't proceed today. That's uh, Calgary Alderman Diane collier asking why a propaganda fair is happening right within the bosom of Calgary City Hall. Joining us now from our Calgary studio is our friend Mike Blanchard to talk about this. Mike, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Ezra. Now, this art display is called Art for an Oil-Free Coast. So this isn't just art for art's sake. This is art for propaganda purposes. And the money actually goes to an anti-oil sands charity, doesn't it? That's right, actually. It goes to the uh, Rain for or the Rain Coast Conservation Foundation, and it's a group that is trying to ban tanker traffic along the West Coast. Now, I shouldn't have used the word charity, although they are a registered charity. They're a lobby group, and they take money from billionaire U.S. foundations like the Tides Foundation. So they're actually a front group for foreign lobbyists. Since when are lobby groups allowed to display propaganda in a neutral place like City Hall? That would be like allowing one political party to set up its... Uh, brochure table in Parliament. It's just not done in a neutral place, right? Well, and there's a, that's the question that really needs to be answered here, Ezra, because they're not allowed to set up in uh, City Hall in the municipal building. There's a bylaw in place that prevents this from happening, and yet the City of Calgary is contravening its own laws by allowing this to proceed. Uh, the city's uh, director of corporate properties signed off on this. I suspect there are uh, a couple of aldermen on council that probably gave this some blessings as well because there are a few that have uh, some, some agendas that certainly fit into this. Uh, so I wouldn't really be surprised to see the fingerprints or the, uh, the lines, if you connect the lines, go all the way back uh, that far. But nonetheless, the city is contravening its own bylaw. So what's stopping a political party, like you said, from setting up inside uh, the, the bowels of City Hall? I guess it just depends on, uh, you know, whose side you're on. Yeah. You know, let me read. We've been showing it on the screens. If we can just back up, I want to show the first bylaw here. It says that uh, uh, a person must not do or participate in any of the following activities within the boundaries of the City Hall. Sell or offer for sale any type of merchandise or product, including the sale of newspapers. So these things are being sold, these pieces of art are being sold. And then here it is, a permit will not be granted to any person for a political event to be held during business hours. And of course, po politics is designed to, as trying to propose or oppose any public policy. This breaks both rules. They're selling something, that breaks the first part, and it's for a political purpose. That's the second part. Now, we saw Diane Carly Urquhart. Have we heard from anyone else on city council? Have we heard from the mayor, for example? No, in fact, uh, the mayor is a bit of a prolific tweeter. Now, Hidnenshi uh, is uh, very adept with social media. I have uh, put some questions to him uh, via Twitter. Uh, no answer yet. Now, from what I hear, though, Ezra, he's going to speak to this tomorrow and perhaps admit that, okay, yeah, we broke our own policy on this one, but I'm not really sure where it's going to go from there. It's going to be, ah, oh, shucks, we messed up, uh, you know, forgive us, we'll, we'll move on. I think what should happen, first of all, is these uh, uh, lobby groups should be charged a fair market rent. I don't know why the city of Calgary taxpayers, many from the oil patch, have to subsidize this anti-oil propaganda. You know, I remember that Calgary City Hall has taken a very strange point of view of what is or isn't allowed in the city hall. I remember in years past, uh, the street church, which truly is a charity, feeding the homeless in Calgary, was kicked out. They actually called the cops on the Christian street church for singing Christmas carols in city hall. But here we have an anti-oil propaganda firm that's being given free reign. I just don't understand. Do you think this slipped through the cracks or do you think this is some sort of political statement? I mean, there's a chance that this just went through and no one paid attention. Do you think that's more likely or do you think that this is uh, an expression of someone within the bowels of City Hall? You know, if you are the Rain Coast Conservation Foundation, I sort of suspect that that should raise some eyebrows right there uh, to come in. I mean, the artwork aside, uh, I mean, uh, no, and nobody is actually criticizing the display itself. I'll tell you what, I mean, nobody advocates uh, censorship in that front. It's, this is just the wrong place to do it. Well, so, that's the thing is, if I, I've got some pro-oil patch 
propaganda I'd like to display. I don't think that I would be able to do that and make a profit off it in a neutral public service place like a city hall. You're right. I mean, let them let them rent out some hotel room and and uh, use some of that foreign money that they get from the Tides Foundation. Mm. Don't milk taxpayers. No, and that's exactly it. I mean, there's got to be some money that's essentially uh, that's available for security and things like that. I mean, there's some awfully hefty uh, uh, price tag that are hung on some of these artworks. I mean, some of the price tags that I saw are up in the you know, the range of about thirty-five thousand dollars. So that stuff isn't just sitting idly uh, while people walk in and about. So some of the security that's involved in this, sure. I mean, so who's going to pay for that? And that's a big concern, Ezra, because like you said, it's the venue that's involved here. It's the wrong place to do it. And you know, I think that uh, Calgarians have every right to be pretty angry on this. One. Yeah, well, it doesn't surprise me. I should put on the record that Nahid Nancy had spoken positively about the Keystone XL pipeline. I actually heard him give a, a very eloquent defense of it. I hope mm. he does the right thing on this because I can't imagine an attack on Calgary's central industry uh, being allowed in City Hall for one more minute. Mag, thanks for joining us here today with the news. Folks.